Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Being the last video of the year, I wanted to cover this topic because I feel like it's quite fitting. We've all had a very difficult 2020 and I'm sure we're all very glad to see the back of it. And I feel like many of you, which is not easy to hear, are probably subconsciously keeping yourselves held in the past and are not really living your true present or experiencing things in the present moment. So the art of letting go and learning to let go is so important for us to learn, to be able to grow and reach our best potential. And I feel like with this being the last video of the year, we should definitely look at letting go of 2020 and everything that it came with. So that's why I wanted to look at how we are holding ourselves back with our self-limiting beliefs and just reliving and repeating the experiences from our past. So if you haven't been to my page before, welcome, I'm Hamasa and I look at mental and emotional well-being as well as personal development and all the topics that are just not that easy for us to openly discuss, but I do so on this page. Please subscribe to my channel and keep up to date with all my content. I would love to see you guys here again. And if you're coming back, then please comment in the comments below so that I can get to know you. So this week's video is just understanding how we are programmed or set to believe that just because one thing goes wrong, then we're a failure. And so we then start believing this and it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy where we think we're not good at something and so we keep repeating those same mistakes and getting the same results. When I explain what I mean by this, it'll make a lot more sense to you guys. Now let's say this applies across board. So you could be in a relationship, applying to for a new job, passing an exam, anything and everything, personal, professional, this applies. If you're one of those people that let's say you have your driving test and you fail it, and you thought you were gonna fail. You come back and you think, I always do this, I always fail. Like if you make a promise to yourself to go to the gym and you don't end up going to the gym or keeping consistent at it, you're like, I always do this, I always give up, I can't keep promises to myself. You have problems in your relationship and then you get into another relationship and you have a problem again and you are thinking, this is all my fault, there's something wrong with me, I always seem to pick the wrong ones. This always happens to me. Keyword is always. Keyword is believing that this happens to you at all times and not looking at situations as just isolated, standalone events. So applying that negative thing that you've taken away from your failed relationship, failed job interview, whatever that may be, the one thing that sticks out in your mind and the one thing that you feel you failed at or you weren't good enough at or that you thought something and it became true, if you hold on to that and then apply it across board to everything, you then putting it out there in the universe is just gonna keep coming back to you. And I heard this saying years ago, and it really stuck out to me and is something that stays in my mind up till today, is that if nothing changes, then nothing changes. And I'm sure I've used this saying in my videos before because I truly believe in that and truly live by it, that if you keep doing the same things, you're going to get the same results. So in order for you to get a different result out of a situation, a relationship, a job, a trip, anything that a conversation, then you've got to change your approach. You've got to change your technique, your mentality, your attitude, and you're gonna get different results. So if nothing changes, then nothing changes. And that couldn't be truer. And let's say if we are, you're not the type of person to believe in this whole laws of attraction, universe, wishy-washy, um, spiritual, holistic stuff. Let's look at it at with the science of things. So what happens when we start thinking something about ourselves? 
So when you fail at whatever that it is that you're doing, let's say you're not very good at money management and you've spent your money and you haven't managed it well for that month, you haven't budgeted that month. Do you then sit and think, oh my God, I'm always like this. I always spend my money. Or do you take a step back and look at it as that isolated situation that you know what, this month, I haven't done so well with my money, but am I always like this? Do I, am I better at saving at certain times? Do I spend it on only certain things and don't just go out spending? What am I good at managing? How can I learn from this? So this happened this month. What can I do next month to not let this happen again? If you start thinking that way and not apply it across board that this is who you are, and there it is, I've accepted it, then you are breaking that cycle of just believing that about yourself. And what happens with our thoughts is that when we think something about ourselves or believe something about ourselves, we then evoke an emotion. And the way we think affects our feelings. Our feelings then create emotions. Our emotions then dictate our actions. So let's not look at it from a spiritual laws of attraction kind of universe way and look at it scientifically. That is a fact that the way you think affects your feelings and emotions and your feelings and emotions then change your actions. So of course, if you're going to walk into a job interview already thinking that you're going to fail, that will translate in your actions and how you carry yourself and go about that interview. So you've already set yourself up for failure. You are self-sabotaging and the only thing and the only person that's doing that to you is your own mind. And the reason our minds do that, and there is again, after doing my research for this video, I know that there is a term called cognitive bias, where our brain with our subconscious mind tries to keep us safe and protect us. So therefore it keeps us in the known. So if we believe a certain thing about ourselves, let's say, I think that I'm a terrible driver, which I'm not by the way, but if I believe that I was a very terrible driver every time I sat behind the wheel because I already feel like and think that I'm a terrible driver, it is then reflected in my actions and I'm panicky and so I drive bad. And also with the brain keeping us in the familiar, if I always drive a certain way, let's say I hold the steering wheel a certain way because that's familiar to me and comfortable, my brain then wants to bring me back to what's familiar and comfortable because our subconscious mind is scared of the unknown. So cognitive bias is your brain emphasizing what you believe about yourself, be it positive or negative, because your brain doesn't know any better. It just knows the familiar. So it tries to keep you in the safe zone, in the known zone. Anything unknown, anything out of the comfort zone could be dangerous. So if you start making yourself think a different way, your brain panics and brings you back. An example of that would be, let's say that you have a big project to do and you hand in one of the assignments and you've done brilliantly and your teacher's very happy with you and you know, you, you're doing great. But instead of believing that, wow, I really smashed this, you know, I'm good, I'm good at this. That self limiting belief then comes back, your brain's cognitive bias comes back and wants to keep you in the familiar of, oh, I always fail, I always fail. So you could be thinking that you're doing great, but straight away your brain brings you back to, no, 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 no. Do you remember what happened the last time? It could also happen next time. And so you start then downplaying your achievement, downplaying that positive move, that positive shift, because you're too scared to think otherwise, because your brain physically won't allow you to do that because it just wants to keep you in the safe bubble. And in order to break out of that thinking and not living in the past, now let's say in relationships, you're holding on to this one person. The reason you're holding on to this one person is because your brain thinks that that's what's safe for you because it's familiar. That's what you know. Even if the relationship was toxic, dysfunctional, it worked. There was a pattern, there was a routine. Your brain knew what you were doing day in, day out. 
Even if there were loads of arguments, your brain knew that an argument was coming. So then it was familiar and it was safe. But the minute you step out of that and you cut the contact and you don't want to speak to them and you're consciously making an effort of letting go, your brain then will keep making you feel like, oh, but what's out there? Oh, but it's not safe for you. You shouldn't go out there. Let's go back to what we know. Let's, let's pull ourselves back to safety. And so you then hold on to what it used to be like. And so you hold on to the past instead of living in your present and understanding that it's your brain playing tricks with you. So you need to take control back and consciously make yourself think otherwise. Now saying that, I know that there are a lot of terms like, you know, put it out there in your universe and it'll come back to you and things like, if you start believing in something, it will definitely happen for you and this is how it works. It doesn't mean that if I start telling myself I'm an amazing driver, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to suddenly become an amazing driver. Can I just say that I'm really, really funny about driving because I'm a real boy racer. So when I'm using this example, I just want to clarify that I'm a great driver, just using it as an example. But what that then does to me is that if I repeatedly tell myself that I'm a great driver, it doesn't mean that I'm going to suddenly become a great driver. So please understand that you can't just wake up one day and start thinking differently and making yourself believe something just like that. It's like anything, your set of beliefs, they develop over time. Things make you feel that way. That's why you believe them. So if you have these self-limiting beliefs about yourself and you're very doubtful about yourself, remember this. Beliefs are just a set of thinking mechanisms. And so you've just put yourself in the pattern of thinking like that for a long time that's become so familiar to you that you're now believing it. But it's just that. It's just a set of thinking. There is nothing else to it. It doesn't mean that's the truth. And by suddenly putting yourself in a different mindset and start thinking differently doesn't mean that you'll suddenly improve your life and you'll become this great cook or driver or whatever that may be. It just means that your attitude and approach to things are different and that translates in your actions of the way you approach situations and tackle them and how motivated you feel doing that. And if you fail, you fail. That's okay, but it's just that isolated incident. That doesn't mean that you're a failure across board. That doesn't mean that every time you touch something is gonna turn to dust. And it doesn't mean that this is who you are. It just means that you went in, you tried your best, it didn't work. What did you learn from it? What can you take away from that? And what, have, what has that taught you that will help you for the next time you need to, you're in a situation like that? Aha, these are the things that helped me. This is what I learned about myself. These are the notes and what I'm gonna take away from this. Done. Chapter closed and you try the next thing. Because what happens is us just repeating the same beliefs, repeating the same mistakes, letting those beliefs translate in our actions will naturally put us on the path to failure. So if you change the way we think, and like I said, you can't just suddenly get up and think differently. It's just believing that just because it fails doesn't mean that this is who I am. Just because I can't be good at this doesn't mean that I'm not good at other things. So I'm going to try it and I'm going to test myself and I'm going to see what I learned from it. And from that, I'm going to try something else. If you go with that mindset, it's not about suddenly waking up and thinking I'm great. I'm the best thing like, oh, I can't do this. I can't take this jump. But I'm the best flyer ever, so I'll be fine flying. That doesn't work. They contradict each other. It's just understanding that I know I'm not that good at taking this jump or I'm not that confident in taking this jump, but I'm going to try it anyway. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'll try something else. And if you fall in that pattern and change your attitude and approach in doing things, you will naturally see different types of results and different types of outcomes come your way. And that's all I mean by learning to let go of anything that's holding you back, be it a person, a relationship, a boss, or whatever that is. That is not just one isolated incident doesn't dictate who you are overall as a person or that you need to then constantly believe that that's the outcome you're going to get. Coming back to the car analogy, if you're the driver of a car, 
and you have one foot on the accelerator for wanting to try out new things and throwing yourself out there. And then you have your other foot on the brake because you're trying to hold yourself back because you've always failed. So this is how it's going to end up anyway. So your, your body doesn't know whether it wants to come and go. Your mind doesn't know what it wants to do because you're pushing from one side and stopping yourself from the other. So this is where it gets uncomfortable because it's never easy for us to suddenly change the narrative about the way we think about ourselves and how we feel about ourselves. So when you start doing that and you start rethinking just who you are, what you're capable of, your strengths and weaknesses, and you start thinking about them as, okay, that weakness is taught me this, 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 these points. So I've learned from them. That's no longer a weakness. It's a lesson. And if you start applying that and just changing and having this attitude of, I can, I will, I've got this then it starts changing your overall attitude about yourself, about the situations and how you handle things and how you carry yourself when you are faced with adversity. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I know that, like I said, we've had a very difficult year and, you know, we're all champions for being here now and having to made it. So be proud of yourselves. Um, you know, it, this whole thing has been a journey for me as well. Um, and I'm just glad to be doing it with you guys and helping you along the way, as well as helping myself. So I just wanted to thank you for um, subscribing to my page and watching my content. And I will see you guys here again in the new year. And thank you so much for watching. Mwah.